there's actually um, a, a question about how do we handle pushback on Latinx because there is a lot of pushback. Um, and as a digital publisher, um, we decided uh, a while ago not to take a stance, an official stance on any of the terms outside of Hispanic because Hispanic is so outdated and we now fully recognize the, um, the limitations and the origins of that word, which comes from a you know, scholarly um, Eurocentric uh, Spanish, you know, that, that, um, that really categorizes all of us from that white um, you know, origin. Um, as opposed to our more recent origins of Latin American countries, which is where most of us are from, um, or, or at least the recent generations. Not all of them, of course, because there's the Mexicans who were in the United States prior to the United States being the United States, right? So, you know, the, the native, uh, native communities, et cetera. But that being said, um, you know, we, it's, it, the way that we approach it is this. It's, we look at it like pronouns, Right. We generally use we kind of use them as synonyms. We will sometimes use Latinx. We'll sometimes use Latino. We'll sometimes use Latina. Um, on, you know, on occasion, uh, if Latin A makes sense, we will use Latin A. It really depends on the context of what it is that we're writing about, who it is that we're writing about and where appropriate and where we can, where we can make that extra effort, which we try to do um, as content creators every single time is try to determine what does the person or the subject of our story identify as. And, if, and we've had people say, I actually don't identify. In fact, our senior editorial uh, strategist, she does not identify as Latina. She identifies as indigenous. So, you know, she doesn't even, so we never refer to her as Latina. She's indigenous. That's what she referred, that's how she identifies. Um, and so, it, you know, we, I think that that's, that's another problem, right? Is that media, because oftentimes when we do have these conversations, we are always trying to lump everybody into that big old box. Um, and, and frankly, when people do push back on Latinx, we just ignore it. We just ignore it because it's, it's not a conversation that we want to argue about. It really is about how do you identify? That's what's important here. And if you don't identify as Latinx, then that just doesn't, that isn't something that speaks to you. Um, however, you will find content within our site and within our social media um, publications where you, know, you will find the content that speaks to you. And that's really what we, at the end of the day, try to focus on the most is how can we best represent so many different people within this diaspora with so many different unique things that the best thing that we can do is um, try to just be very specific about who it is that we're talking about. So when we do refer to people from Mexico, we will call them Mexicans. If we're referring to um, you know, uh, Afro Latinas with, from a Caribbean background, we will call, we will try to name it what it is. Right. And, and so, it, you know, the point is, is that I think that that should be something that one, all media do, but even as people, we should try to make that extra effort. If we're going to try to understand you from how you identify down to your gender, um, then we should also try to identify you based on how you identify as a person of color. Yes, especially because of the complexity of, of people. People will label themselves as Mexicans, Salvadorans, Hondurans, Colombians, whatever. It's, it's not for us to say, you are this, you are this tag. We are here to listen to the story of everyone else. We're here to amplify those stories. Right. So if someone says, okay, so I don't want you to refer to me as Latinx. I want you to call me Mexican. I want you to call me indigenous. I want you to call me Afro-Colombian or whatever. We will listen and we will make sure that people know they're in identified that way because we, we cannot say this tag is for you because if people don't identify with it, we are not anyone we're not governors of the the culture to say right. hey this has to be your time right yeah a thousand percent and yeah i definitely want to reiterate that you know i i think it's so important that um that and, and that was really the stance that ultimately we ended up taking is that we are not the ones who are going to define for you 
We are not going to be the ones that, that try to define language, particularly when it's something that's based on Spanish, which again is a language that was imposed on us. Because if we were all speaking our native tongues, we would not be speaking Spanish, right? So, you know, there, there's, there's that additional conversation of like, oh, well, Spanish is our mother, our mother tongue or, you know, our native. No, it's not. Right. Like Spanish is absolutely not your native tongue. Let me tell you, unless you are from Spain, you that is not your native tongue. So, you know, like this, the, you get into this conversation where people just get so passionate that you're now bastardizing the Spanish language. And, you know, to me, I really think of language as um, as as evolving. We don't speak the English and the Spanish that we speak now, we did not speak 50 years ago. We did not speak 100 years ago. We certainly didn't speak 500 and 1,000 years ago, right? Um, and so I I, I'm part of those people that believe that language can evolve. And, uh, and yes, Spanish is engendered language. Um, however, if we're speaking Spanish within the, the confines of a different country, I, I think it's it's absolutely acceptable to uh, introduce new words, you know, and to further expand that language for in a way that makes sense for that particular community.